Hello. In this video, we'll be covering the delimited file destination in Centerprise. The delimited file destination is a destination or a target, which means that it's a writer which will write records coming from a source data set into the text file in a delimited format. You can see here that we have ports here on the left, ports on the right, and the tree here in the middle. This tree represents the column format of the file. Uh, the ports on the left are how you will map into the uh, destination. Uh, so er for every field that I have in my source, and here you can see where I have a uh, data set coming from a view in a database. So wherever I have the field mapped from the source, that's where it will end up in the delimited file destination. I also have ports here on the right. Uh, the ports are on the right, so I can map to subsequent destinations and transformations so that this becomes a step on the way uh, to a, a record's final destination. So to use the delimited file destination, I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new data flow. Here I kind of started already. And to use it, I'm going to go to the toolbox, look under the destination section, and drag and drop the delimited file destination from the toolbox onto the designer. And from that, you'll have a blank box with a tree with nothing but the new member placeholder in it. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is configure the properties for my delimited file destination. So to do that, I can right-click or double-click and select properties. Um, and the first thing I want to do is specify the file path of where I want to write this. I can just type there directly or I can click this icon and uh, choose or write the file name here or I can choose an existing file. In this case, I'm going to overwrite this one and click Save. Say so yes, I want to overwrite and then I'm presented with the absolute file path of where I'll be writing this file. Um, so we have a couple of other options, but before I do that, I'd like to talk about the layout of the file. So here you can see that uh, since I've used an existing file, it went ahead and copied the layout. I can easily uh, move the layout by selecting everything and deleting it right my own layout. Two, three. And then when I click OK, you can see that I'm presented with that layout on my delimited file destination. I'm going to go ahead, though, and right-click and select Remove All Elements, which will bring me back to the original layout. So uh, now that it leaves me black with nothing but the new member uh, element, and this is used to uh, automatically create uh, fields in the destination, and also map them at the same time. So I can do this, or I can use the Auto Map feature to quickly map it. So now that I have my layout uh, constructed, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the options here and tackle the rest of the options you see here. So the first one here is first row contains header. If I have this checked, that means that whatever I have in my columns here, and this, the, these, these are the column headers, and it's, uh, more specifically this column is the column header, and you can see here header, uh, that's what will go on the first line of the text file. So if I uncheck this, I will not output that first line. And I'm going to go ahead and run this sample without, the, uh, without that checkbox checked. And here you can see I already have the file open. That's why it's asking me would I like to refresh it. And the first uh, line is data. It's not the header. I'm going to go ahead and create a new vertical tab just so I don't have to keep switching between the two here. Let's also move these a little further left so we can see more of the data. So now I'm going to go ahead and put that checkbox back so you can see what the data looks like once we do have uh, the header in there. And here you can see that the first line is now the column headers and not the data. So moving on to the next option is the field delimiter. So in this file you can see that the delimiter is a comma so for every single, uh, between every single field, we have a, call, a comma separating the data. So let me go back here. Um, so I can change that from a comma to something else. So for example, I want to make this a semicolon or a tab. I just click on the drop down and pick the delimiter that I want. I can also, in this case, I'm going to make this a pipe delimited file and click OK. When I do that, you can see that the delimiter will change from comma to the, my pipe delimited file. I 
The next option is the record delimiter. The record delimiter is what separates each record from one another. Uh, by default it's the carriage return line feed, but I can also select uh, either one of these or I can have my custom, again, custom uh, record delimiter. Uh, when I do that, you'll see that the file changes uh, significantly, so now it's not broken up at the carriage return line feed the records are actually s split up by a question mark and you'll just have to trust me that there's a question mark uh, separating uh, one record from the next. So I'm going to go ahead and change uh, each of these back to comma and uh, carriage return line feed and move on to the next uh, option which is the encoding. Uh, by default the uh, encoding is UTF-8 but you can see that you can select any uh, encoding, I think we have about 70 some odd encodings that you can choose from, including uh, UTF-8, UTF-16, ASCII, uh, Unicode, as well as EPCIDIC. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the default uh, Unicode there. The next option is the text qualifier. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run this so we get our data back to the original format here. Uh, and then you can see that for the uh, some of these records, the second the description here, or the actually the name, uh, has a quotation mark around it, and the reason for that is with well, inside the field you'll see that we also have the comma or the delim the field delimiter of our record. So to to indicate that this is not part of our uh, not part of the you know the next this, the right the next field doesn't begin here. This is part of the same field value. Uh, you can put quotes around it, and this is the you know the limited file standard. This has nothing to do with Centerprise, but Centerprise will allow you to uh, create this type of data. So let's say that instead of double double quote marks, you want a different uh, text qualifier. Let's say you want to use single quote instead. To do that, go into the options and change the text qualifier to single quote. And again, you can type in anything you want here. I'll leave it as single quote and run this data flow. So now you can see that all of the double quotes have now been replaced with single quotes. The last uh, option here, uh, besides the, the penultimate one here, the apply text qualifier to all fields, uh, means that it'll force that uh, qualifier onto all fields. So if I run this again, and now you look at the data, you can see that the single quote has been uh, sur is surrounding every single uh, field, if, no matter if it needs it or not. The next, uh, the last option is the append to file if it exists. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. If you check this, uh, it'll go ahead and write every single new record uh, after the last record it found in the file. If you leave this unchecked, it'll go ahead and create this uh, file that you specified here. So if you do not want to have this uh, there, then by all means do not uh, you know, do not leave this unchecked unless you want to overwrite the file. So that leaves us with the uh, the grid here, and I think I explained the grid uh, how this works. Uh, it's the same grid that you see in all actions in Centerprise. It's basically how you construct the layout, including the name. This is the Centerprise. Uh, name and how it refers to the field. The header, uh, this is what the, the text that will show up in the file if you have that uh, option selected. The data type is not that important in the destination uh, because basically it all writes to text anyway. Uh, the format, however, is very uh, specific to the date and whenever you have a date column. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and change the my example here. Um, and show you, actually for this one I'm going to make this one a horizontal tab group so we can see more of the final column um, and I'm going to change this to uh, use the other one here so in this one I have a date going into my data set so I'm going to preview my data and you can see the last uh, column being the date field with you know today's date uh, on it so what I want to do is write this file, and write this value in a number of different ways. I'm going to go ahead and just run the, the data flow as is. Say yes. And here you can see in my, uh, in my data here, you can see the last uh, value, the last column, 
containing a date uh, value. I can change the format of this date value by selecting the format, uh, different, the different format option from the, uh, the combo here. So here you can see I've specified uh, month, month, day, day, slash, slash, uh, y, 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 with a year. I can change this by selecting uh, one of the other options. So in this case, I'm going to change it to uh, year dash month dash day. Select OK. Now run it. Select Yes. And now you can see that the date format has changed completely. So I can I can select an existing date format, or I can select, click New and in this case, I can say y, 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 month, day, day, colon, hour, hour, minute, minute, second, second. Um, and now run this. And here you can see that I've changed the date format again. Uh, and that's pretty much how you use uh, the delimited file destination in Centerprise. Thank you.